we want to look at the possibility of no deal. Most economists say the impact of a quick shutdown on the economy would be minimal. If it lasts more than a few days, though, we could see effects in the housing sector and on second quarter GDP. Martin Bailey was a White House economic advisor during the last shutdown in 1995. He then became President Clinton's chief economist. He's now a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. Uh, welcome to uh, In Business. In reading you. your concerns, it sounds like you think we don't have an accurate read on just how much of an impact we're talking about in the broader economy. Well, this is a different time than in 1995. The economy was growing fairly strongly then. Uh, concerns about the debt and the debt limit were not, uh, not as acute, not in the same way. We have an, a recovery that's much more fragile now. And uh, financial markets, global financial markets, are also much more fragile. There's a lot going on in Europe, as you know, concerns about uh, sovereign debt there, so that if we start getting to the edge on the, on the debt ceiling, I think we are playing with fire. It's not that I think we know that we're going to run into uh, serious problems with this, but, but we're getting awfully close to the edge, awfully close to the flame, in fact. Yeah, and in looking at some of the analysis, Bloomberg's been drilling down on specifically what's different between the 90s and right now. When it comes to spending on contractors in particular, uh, government employees who aren't, you know, aren't necessarily directly employed by the government, the federal spends up to... Uh, multiples of where it was in the 90s it was just 193 billion dollars uh, when you were at the Council of Economic Advisors right. so uh, when you look at the math I mean how much income are we looking uh, as deferred or just not paid out to to federal employees well I, I don't have the exact figure it, it knocked about 1% off uh, the, the one quarter GDP back in 1995 but most of that came back the following quarter so it was not a big deal at, at that time, um, but it certainly could knock a, a percentage point if we had a three-week uh, shutdown. Uh, fewer government workers involved, maybe, but more contractors, so mm -hmm. it's split a little bit differently between the private and, and public sectors. But nevertheless, the impact is people aren't getting paid, and so if they're not getting paid, they don't have much to uh, spend on, uh, on other things, and so it does have a, a spillover effect on the rest of the economy. Um, so, you know, I think we can hope for the best if they can work out a deal in a fairly short period of time or have that one week right. uh, extra to get a deal, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, that could deal with the problem. But if it drags on, and it does seem like politically they're really butting heads on this, there's a lot of disagreement between Republicans, particularly the younger Republicans and, and the White House and and the Senate. So I think there's going to have to be a little bit of bloodletting uh, before they're going to agree to a, a, a compromise. You know, the financial markets seem to be shrugging this off. The bond markets don't seem to be reflecting the risk that I, I hear you indicating. Talk to me about the importance of these budget negotiations in terms of setting the tone for the next one to two years to come in Washington. Well, I, I, I have said there could be a silver lining coming out of the struggle that uh, investors are seeing that Congress is now really taking seriously that we've got to do something about the deficit. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, many people, you know, uh, Ryan has, has proposed his plan. A lot of people say, well, it's too draconian, but at least now we're starting to talk about uh, the fact that we have these huge deficits and something's got to be done about them. Uh, so that is possibly the silver lining that we're starting to take the longer term problem or the, the two year, five year problem much more seriously than, uh, than we were before. Now, markets are shrugging them off right now. I'm relieved that they're shrugging them off. That's, uh, I think that's appropriate. They still think we're going to work out a settlement in the next few days or in a, in a couple of weeks, and, and uh, that should not disrupt uh, markets too much. But again, if it goes on longer or if we start to start yeah. seeing trouble with the debt ceiling, then it's a different story. Well, the other deadline that's looming is May 16th. That's when the Treasury Secretary says we're going to hit that debt ceiling, $14 trillion, unless right. it gets raised. I mean... Are we mispricing risk on that front? Well, I think everyone believes that the Treasury will ultimately honor its, uh, its, uh, its uh, obligations so that we won't, in fact, default. Um, but uh, it is going to create a certain mess. It's going to create a certain circus atmosphere. And, of course, we're very reliant 
on foreign countries to buy our debt who may not understand all the intricacies of, of the fight within uh, Congress and they may start getting nervous. Uh, so basically I think it will be all right but mm -hmm. uh, there's always that risk and we're not at a time when we really want to take extra risks. That I think is the concern. All right. Mr. Bailey, thank you so much uh, for your time and for sharing welcome. your experience.